doggone it, or the new tools and the new art renaissance. I practice art by pursuing hyperrealism, though I do stray for the sake of texture from time to time. But deep down, I am and always will be a pop surrealist. Because humanity will be known amongst the stars for its cute bubblegum lowbrow art. Period. The greatest and most revolutionary and one of the most beautiful things in the universe are the things that make us smile. So, I generated 400 fluffy lowbrow characters as the first order of the weak with stable diffusion. The trick was to add, oh my god, it's so fluffy I could die, to the stable diffusion prompt, which makes sense to me. I liked what I saw, but personally, I was not impressed. Not at all, because purely synthetic art creations lack class, humor, and the punchline. Basically, they are just screensavers that keep going in circles. It is not art, I said, though those are art products that can be traded for money which, you know, puts food on the table. So in a way, I think, and this may be bigger than anything else I'll say in this poem, the myth of the starving artist might have just ended. Anywho, I focused on the Alpha and the Omega, the inspiration and the final medium, with stable diffusion artificial intelligence in the middle. The key to this is IMG to IMG, or image to image, where you can escape the synthetic creations by using an image that means something to you or, more precisely, an image that, when you're done with it, will make lots of people smile. You know, you can just use your own high school watercolor creations, as they will bring a smile to your own heart. With the help of stable diffusion, your artwork will become what you initially imagined when you started working on it. Personally, I just looked around for silly things, and in my life, those are never far. I loaded it up as the starting point to the stable diffusion image synthesis, giving the robot a soul of silliness and cuteness, Letting it convert my source photo to furry kawaii anime with a chibi spin. I will be absolutely balancing this out with something more serious tomorrow or this week. Uh, that's an important and key point, also a revelation about stable diffusion. Your artwork doesn't quite become larger, but it encompasses more. It's more visible at the initial stage of examining this thing you've created. Eventually, all art reduces to its meaning, at least in my mind. But AI will create such a large landscape at first, that will capture everyone by the button. A more traditional painting would actually take a while. You'd have to ease into it and start noticing the details. The AI throws the details out at first. 
It's not a bad deal. The Omega is a set of 4x4 four four frames that I purchased. And I print the generative art at a local pharmacy that has a neat little photo print station. I am still not ready to launch my art show here, but I have 12 very silly and incredibly furry opening images. I repaired whatever the AI did not generate correctly in Krita, and I must say, it was a fun few hours. Just as fun as if you were working on one large integrated work. Mm -hmm. Also, if you are a starting artist, then know that this is a beautiful way to practice fur and hands and face and making corrections and matching colors and the whole color scale and relative colors. Beautiful, beautiful, because you're starting in the middle. You are placed right in the middle of the battle and here are all the things you have to fix. Very cool. Yes, because it is an AI. Well, not exactly intelligent, but let's call it AI. And it is heavily automated. I need more standalone works. Right now, I am going through a quilt phase where I am tiling multiple AI creations together and integrating them together um, to create the same amount of effort that usually go in my paintings that I am normally proud of. Let me make this clear. AI, in a way, just helps you make more people smile. Or it helps you make a broader audience more connected to whatever your creation is. Because a quilt of artworks will grab more people by the button. It helps you to make a difference in more lives, at least at first. And no one can argue that this is a bad thing. Think of it this way. When you create a painting for a specific customer, it is like shining a laser pointer. When you are working on art with AI, it's like lighting a torch that more people will see at first, more people will appreciate. In the end, it makes all the same difference. But how many smiles you get at first differs. A standard work of art will take a long time to gather up all the smiles. An artificially generated work of art, because of how broad it is, because of how many people it reaches out to, will make more people smile initially. If I was working with Krita, I would be one third done with a single painting. Here with AI, I'm about one fifth into it, with 50 to 90 more little quilt tiles to go. It is just a different kind of tool for a different kind of appreciation. The same negativity was had around Camera Obscura, Camera Lucida, around the first photographs, videos, digital photographs, and wall projectors. Again, AI is just a different tool that creates a different kind of work. Now let us ask the question if it's art or not. And let's just begin by saying that what makes art art is the ability to change lives for better. If you have once encountered something that has changed your life for the better, then know that above all other things, 
it was also in its own special and unique way a work of art. Art isn't really about effort, though escaping effort is a crime. In fact, this is the difference between art and just an art product that will only put food on your table. In terms of effort, the solution is purely mathematical. A good piece of art takes at least 100 hours of work, so just spend 100 hours with generative AI and we'll call it a great start. That's it. In closing, the argument against AI art don't really matter because AI can be trained on your own art and your own models. What it is about is honesty, authenticity, hard work, and life-changing results. <laughs>